Hi y'all and welcome to CISO Art. In this video I'm going to show you how I painted this a fantasy piece in acrylics. I'm just starting off with a very simple pencil sketch. Uh, the only reference photo I had to work from was uh, this is my sister-in-law and it's um, it was just a head and shoulder shot actually mostly just head. <laughs> so I had to pose uh, other people, uh, including myself, and take little selfies trying to figure out how to wanted the arms and, and shoulders and stuff to go. So that was kind of interesting. Um, I just mixed up a very pale, soft, peachy color with a cadmium red and yellow. Both of them were the light versions. And a touch of sap green just to brown it down a little bit. Now normally I would paint the background first and, and move forward from the back to the focal point, but I'm not entirely sure how this is going to turn out because it is all made up and um, that's branching out into new territory for me where it's all, almost all completely from imagination. Um, so it's, it's more of a challenge and I'm also still fairly new at, at doing portraits and don't have a great deal of experience or comfort with that. So I wanted to do her face first and see if I could get it to look the way I wanted before I invested all that time to do all the background and then would have to change things around a lot and, and so forth. So in this particular piece, because this is such a challenge for me to do uh, portrait type work, I wanted to do the hardest part first. And then I thought the rest of it would be fun if I could get the hard part out of the way. So that's why I did it this way. I'm using burnt umber and raw umber and ultramarine blue and cad red light, um, unbleached titanium white and yellow ochre on my palette. And for these dark, darker areas on the face, I'm using the burnt umber and the ultramarine blue. In this painting, as we're facing it, I'm imagining that the light is coming not only from above, but that the light would be a little bit stronger on the left side of the painting, and the right side of the painting would have slightly darker shadows. This is the phase in the painting where I need to caution myself to not give up and to not get frustrated because it really doesn't look anything like my sister-in-law yet. Um, but you have to just keep trying. And what I do or what I have done is, is I'll just remember and force myself to take a step back. And I'll turn the picture upside down and I'll turn the painting upside down. and. Um, I haven't tried the mirror trick that a lot of people talk about, but just turning them sideways or, or something where you can really direct compare kind of gets you back on, on track and gets you focused. And also sometimes I just stop, take a break, and step away. And um, with acrylics, especially because of the way that they blend and mix, it's just a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, you'll see what I mean.
I mixed burnt umber and the cadmium red light together to make the shadow color between her fingers. And just a light color now to highlight the fingers. For her hair, I mixed ultramarine blue and burnt umber and lots of titanium white to make a soft gray. And this will be the basis for her predominantly white hair. I'm starting to feel comfortable now with the direction this is going. I think I'll be able to make some adjustments to her face and it'll make it more closely resemble the reference photo. So I decided to go ahead and, and start working on the background and I'm using cadmium yellow light to indicate the sunlight above the top of the water. And then I'm going to add phthalo turquoise and phthalo blue and use my handy glazing medium to mix those colors together and, and get a little smoother blend. I added more phthalo blue to this mixture to indicate 
the depth of the water. So it's bluer at the bottom and more turquoise and moving towards yellow at the top. I have probably about a half and half mixture of glazing medium to pigment for this mixture to keep it transparent. And I'm using my very soft, very inexpensive makeup brush to blend out the brush strokes. I want to set off the white of her hair with something with more contrast and I think having a ruffled jeweled collar and a cape and crown will uh, fit the image of, of her being the queen of mermaids. So I'm just starting to block that in. I'm using pure titanium white with no water in my brush to add some bright highlights to her hair. I'm using a very, very pale gray to indicate the whites of her eyes, which I know is probably hard for you all to see on this because the actual size of her face is maybe an inch, inch and a quarter. So it's difficult to fit a lot of detail in such a small space, but I think it's working.
I'm double loading a small round brush with yellow ochre and white to indicate the beads of a necklace. I'm starting on the tail now just to work on the composition some more and, and the shape and it's fun and it gives me a break from working on the skin tones and letting the area on her face and her body dry before I start applying more paint in those areas. For the tail I'm using phthalo blue, occasional little bits of titanium white, um, purple and red and yellow and green. Um, but predominantly, this is phthalo blue.
I added in some sorts of rock or coral formation that <clears throat> I would like to think is going to look like it's off in the distance. So I used a lot of the thalo turquoise and the thalo blue that was in the actual water itself with some burnt umber and some titanium white to gray it. And then I'm using the um, yellow ochre and the thalo turquoise to indicate the, the sea floor. So it's got a little bit of a sandy color to it. And then I also want to make sure that I darken it right underneath where she and the seahorse are. So I spared you watching <laughs> all of that, So, but you, you have an idea of how that was put in. So now I want to start blocking in the seahorse. And I'm just using some dark color to sort of indicate where those, I don't know what you call them, but they're project, projected segments almost of the actual seahorse. And I'm just making kind of a muddy green and yellow, or green and yellow ochre and blue and white, making kind of a, kind of a muddy color just to block block it in and those dark stripes that indicate the segments are just a road map. Now as I'm working on blocking in the base layer of the seahorse, I am not mixing up particular colors on my palette. I'm, I'm swiping it, my brush into the various colors that I want to include, but I don't want smooth colors. So I'm, I'm not mixing it at all, or I'm trying not to, because I want a lot of variety and a lot of texture. And the horse, and a lot of ver and the best way to do that is to get a lot of variation in the color. I'm using a stiff, flat brush, and it's dry, and I'm picking up the unbleached titanium and yellow ochre to make a light color for some of the spines along the back, and to start highlighting those segments that I had indicated earlier with the dark colors when we first started blocking this in.
So I'm starting to block in the idea of a transparent or semi-transparent flowing cape. And I'm just starting off with uh, kind of a medium gray. And again, that's with the old standby of ultramarine blue and burnt umber and titanium white. And I don't, I didn't draw this out before. It was something I decided I wanted to add when I made that collar for her to um, offset her hair. And because I hadn't drawn it out, I'm, you know, just trying to figure it out as, as I'm painting it, which can be a little bit scary because you're covering up, you know, the stuff that you've already spent hours working on. But if it gets away from me too quickly, as long as that paint hasn't dried, I can wipe it off with a wet paper towel. I'm thinking this is starting to go in, in the right direction. So I'm getting a little more confident in my strokes and I'm adding varying amounts of the titanium white into this gray mixture. And then because I'm thinking that it's gonna be semi-transparent cape, I wanna make sure that I add some of the colors that are surrounding it so it'll look more realistic. So I'll add a little more blue and green down at the bottom where her uh, scales of her tail would be showing through. And I'll go back in and add some of the flesh tones where it's draped over her arms. I'm adding small touches of dark to indicate the cast shadow of the beads and the pendant on her necklace.
I'm also adding just a few more highlights to her cape. And most of that paint is still kind of wet, so we'll have to let that dry and add more later, but these few small touches are okay. So on the seahorse, I think I want to warm it up a bit more to offset all of the blues and the greens of the rest of the painting. So I'm using predominantly raw or burnt umber with the cadmium red mixed in with it to warm it up. I also want to darken some of the areas that would indicate cast shadows from her. I thought I'd show you one of the tools that I use when I check my composition, and that's to take a photo or to look at my paintings through a filter or to look at them in black and white. So I think you can see here the contrasts and the values look like they're working. So I'm excited about how it's going. So I'm using this, uh, I think it's called Ruby Satin. It's an older brush that I've had for a long time. It's synthetic bristles, but I really like it. It's very versatile. You can make large marks with it and also these very fine delicate dots of color. So I'm double loading my brush in combinations of um, unbleached titanium white and the titanium white and the burnt umber and I'm just adding lots and lots and lots of texture. And I'm also trying to concentrate on um, making the lighter values towards the center of the body as you're looking at it because that will make it look like it's coming towards you and give some form and shape to the seahorse. This is where you can see that the groundwork that we laid really made a difference um, so that the colors shine through underneath all these little dots of, and blobs of paint that we're putting down.
I'm adding some darker shadows, just some little last um, touches on detailing the seahorse. So I added in a few more things and I skipped it on the um, filming just to keep the length of the video down. I added uh, a scepter and the crown and I also extended that background formation of rock or coral or whatever it is across the width of the painting because I thought that helped to bring her forward and, and set that area back and I liked for it to continue on across. So to put in these um, seaweed stalks that are flowing in the, in the current, I just double loaded this small flat brush with yellow and white on one corner and just plain old sap green on the other corner. And um, just kind of drag the brush along and kind of twist it a little bit as you go. And it'll create those natural uh, shadows and variations. It almost like a ribbon effect. So we're almost done. I'm just adding one final transparent glaze of the thalo turquoise to the top area of the water to make it more cohesive. So here I'm just panning for you so you can see the finished product in a frame. Um, it's, it has two coats of varnish on it. I turned those little blobs of red and yellow paint into fish and added a couple little fish to the seaweed. And here she is all done, Queen of the Mermaids. Hope you enjoyed it. Join me for the next video very soon. Thanks, y'all.